President Biden announced yesterday he will raise the cap on the number of refugees admitted to the United States to 62,500 for this fiscal year after being criticized by fellow Democrats last month for holding Trump era le holding to Trump era levels. Biden said in a statement, this erases the historically low number set by the previous administration of 15,000, which did not reflect America's values as a nation that welcomes and supports refugees. The Biden administration will also reunite four migrant families this week who were separated under Trump-era immigration policies. The group includes a child who was just three years old when his or her parents were deported. These families were a part of the pilot program for former President Trump's zero tolerance policy, where more than 5,500 families were split apart. Yesterday, MSNBC correspondent Jacob Soboroff spoke to Brian, an 18 year old migrant who, ex who is expected to be reunited with his mother this week after being separated from his family for more than three years. It's just a uh, really cruel experience that I just hope no one um, has to go through. They're doing a good job on protecting the kids, but I think they're like putting too much attention on protecting them physically. But what about like, emotionally and everything that like they're feeling and that they go through by separating them from their parents? Yeah, they yes, they're you're protecting them from whatever they're escaping from their countries or whatever, whatever they had to go through. But they're, you're putting them into even more pain by separating them from their families. According to the White House, 1,000 families are still separated, many of whom had their records lost in the Trump years. Joining us now, U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandra Mayorkas. Um, Secretary Mayorkas, thank you for being on again this morning. Um, explain the process of trying to reunite these families, of uh, what steps are taken, and what considerations are made to try and make this process happen. And it, I assume it won't be possible to reunite all the families. Thank you very much for having me back. Uh, this is uh, our highest priority is to reunite these families. Um, as we um, so powerfully saw, these are young people in their formative years. Uh, these are uh, sometimes children as young as three years old. Uh, we are um, addressing the needs and vulnerabilities not only of the children, but of course their mothers, their fathers, uh, the people that uh, make up these families. It takes time to uh, review records that, uh, quite frankly, were in shambles when we inherited them. Inaccurate, incomplete. We need to verify identities, find the families. Uh, arrange for uh, their travel, and importantly, develop a process where we can systematically bring them into this country safely and begin the healing process. We cannot do it alone. We rely on and work with community-based organizations, nonprofit organizations that have been doing this work for three years, ever since the cruel and inhumane policies of the prior administration began. We couldn't do it without them. Mr. Secretary, it's Willie Geis. Good to have you on the show this morning. As you know, there are advocacy groups out there who are also working to reunite families, and they say they're doing more than DHS has done, and that these four families being reunited is, of course, good news. But by your own estimation, there are a thousand more out there, families that have been separated. So why is this such an arduous, difficult task? It's arduous and difficult uh, for the reasons I expressed, um, and it's good to be back and speak about something um, so critically important. It's difficult to uh, find the families. It's difficult to identify uh, them, to verify their identification. Um, and it's extremely difficult sometimes to overcome the fear that the prior administration instilled in them and have them come forward so we can indeed bring them into the United States uh, under our humanitarian authorities. Our announcement of the reunification of four families is only the beginning, but it's an important beginning to, in fact, 
publicize because the fact of this success, which we could not achieve without our, without our community partners, will hopefully uh, reduce or eliminate the fear that other families have in coming forward, and we will build confidence in the integrity of our effort and the sincerity of our commitment to reunite these families. So, Mr. Secretary, what is happening for the benefit of our viewers who are familiar with this story but don't know specifically what happens to the children once they were separated, as you say, under the previous administration's policy? Where are those kids right now? How have they been living for the last several months and, in some cases, years? Regrettably, the uh, spectrum uh, the range of conditions in which those children's re uh, children remain in the United States, if in fact they are here, is quite broad. Uh, some uh, live with uh, immediate relatives, some with distant relatives. Some are placed in foster care uh, because they're unaccompanied and they don't have a sponsor here in the United States. Um, some, as um, uh, Jacob correctly noted, have been separated uh, for more than three years and their families are sometimes, their parents are sometimes in the countries of origin, Honduras, El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, a, a tremendous distance away. Some of these children are in their most formative uh, years, their most formative stages of development. Other are, others are acutely vulnerable by reason of their incredible youth, three years of age at the time of separation. It's extraordinarily cruel and inhumane what occurred before us. Mr. Secretary, Casey Hunt's here with a question for you. Case. Mr. Secretary, good to see you. Uh, we've reported here that part of what occurred under the previous administration was that many of these records were lost, and that raises the possibility that many of these kids will never find or their parents than the, the, the people who we separated them from. So my question for you is, do we have a plan to make this right if we can't find the parents or the families of these children? What is the United States of America going to do to right this wrong? It's, um, it's not about righting the wrong of the past. It's about restoring uh, the conscience uh, of our government. It's about reuniting the families. And we're not ready to say uh, that some children will never be reunited. Uh, with their parents. We're just not ready to say that. You, you know, uh, we heard loudly and clearly from some of the community-based organizations uh, yesterday when we first announced the reunification of these four, fam these four families about the work they've been doing for three years in the trenches. Uh, these are heroic efforts by community-based organizations. These are heroic efforts by counsel who represent these separated families and try to vindicate uh, their rights and bring healing to them. We're privileged to work alongside them. Uh, our, our efforts are going to be unrelenting, and we're not prepared to say uh, that uh, any child uh, will not be reunited with the parent. And, uh, Mr. Secretary, what about the uh, crisis at the border right now? What is, what is happening to handle that directly? Anything new planned to, de to deal with the people coming here, coming with children, sending children alone? About five weeks ago, I said publicly that um, uh, this challenge um, is a serious one. But we have a plan, and we know how to manage a situation like this. This is what we do. Uh, we are executing on our plan, and it takes time. Now it is a month later. On March 28th, we had 5,767 unaccompanied children in the Border Patrol stations. On March 28th, the average length of stay of an, of an unaccompanied child in a Border Patrol station was 133 hours. We have about 600 children um, in a Border Patrol station now, and the average length of stay is under 30 hours. We've been executing our plan. We will continue to do so. And we have this situation with respect to the unaccompanied children under control. That doesn't mean that the challenge is behind us. Migration is a dynamic uh, and perpetual challenge, but this is the work that we do. 
Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be, I'm sure, having you back soon to continue this conversation. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.